Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. What's that tune, Mrs. Norton? The one I was just humming, Miss Calvany? Yes, you sing it a lot, but I've never heard anyone else who knows oh, it. Oh, it's sort of a private tune between my husband and me. Oh, I should have known. All right, now, if you'll roll over, I'll rub you back down. Oh, that would be nice. You know, being in a hospital has its compensation. Just tell me if I get too strong. You couldn't. You know, I think I'm a cat at heart. I love having my back rubbed almost as much as Shakespeare. Shakespeare? Our cat. He's yellow. <laughs> Folks sure think up funny names for their pets. Ooh, ooh. Oh, could you rub there some more? R- right there under my left shoulder blade. Right here. A little bit higher. Mm, that's wonderful. Relax, Mrs. Norton. You aren't relaxed. Oh, do I have to relax, too? You don't ever relax, do you? Well, I haven't got much time. We live on a farm, you know. Do you have a cow? Nope. Well, you have the baby Mm. now to make up for it. Not the same thing. My husband would love to have a cow, but we couldn't afford both. Babies are smaller. And they last longer. David's not a bit sorry. He'd better not be. That cute little thing. Mm. Well, he's not very handsome yet. At two days? What do you want, a movie star? I'm satisfied. As long as he has character. There you are. All rubbed down. Every rub weren't costing me so much money, I'd feel rich. You just roll over now and try and get some rest. Oh, rest, 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 rest. I want to go down the hall now and order your lunch, and then I'll be back with an eggnog for you. When does my son have his lunch? Oh, not for an hour yet. Oh, so long? It's only 12 o'clock, Mrs. Norton. Is that all? At home, 12 o'clock comes so early. Here, it seems as if it should be tomorrow already. Well, your husband will be along any time now, and then you won't mind this hospital so much. Oh, the hospital's all right. It's just me. Tonight, we're going to give you something to make you sleep, and no begging off. Sleeping is something I've always been able to do on my own. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Not much of a talent, but it's one I've got. It didn't do so good last night. Who told you? The floor nurse. (laughs) She's a tattletale. I have no privacy, no privacy at all. Oh, David. Hello, darling. Well, now your husband's here. I'll leave you in his trust, Mrs. Norton. Oh, uh, before you go, nurse. Uh, Yes, Mr. Norton. Um, how's the patient today? Hmm... Restless and tired. I heard you, and I'm not. Now, you hush up. I'm talking to someone who knows how you feel better than than you do. Insults, insults, insults. Who knows better about me than me? Than I, if than you're I. so bright. Well, uh, Miss Caden? It's just that she doesn't know how to rest, Mr. Norton, and it's caught up with her today. Serves her right. It Serves does indeed. Right. I've been rubbing her back. Oh, Norton. it was wonderful, David. You ought to learn how. And she'll be more comfortable now. We're going to fix her up a fine lunch. And we're going to eat all of it, aren't we? We'll try. Well, that's the best we can do. Now, Mr. Norton, you keep her resting, and I'll be back in a little while. All right. We, we, we. Why do nurses always say we? Now, you heard what she said, so you shut up, and I'll do all the talking. I'm not even allowed to talk anymore. People go around saying I'm tired when I'm not. This is a fine, free country it is. Ah, you'll feel better tomorrow, darling. I felt fine yesterday, too. If you had a half ounce of sense about you, you'd realize you're no superwoman. Well, I don't have to be a superwoman. All I had was one tiny little baby. I don't know. Eight pounds isn't so tiny. When I hold him, he doesn't feel like eight pounds. They must have weighed him with his shoes on. (laughs) (laughs) And holding books in both hands. Oh, Yesterday, I thought I'd be up today. Mm-hmm. What's the big rush? Don't you like all this, uh, this attention? You should be eating lunch, not rushing over here from the office to see me. Oh, I'll, I'll have lunch, too. Bet you 20 cents. Bet you. Shake? Sure. Oh, darling, I love you a thousand times more than ever. I couldn't love you any more. You couldn't? No. But I, uh, I love you differently. Differently better or differently worse? Differently always. 
Is that good? Nothing is ever going to take us away from each other. I wouldn't let it. You wouldn't, huh? Except we're sort of away from each other now, aren't we? Oh, I think we're more together than ever, darling. Then you're not jealous of the baby? <laughs> now, what, what do you think? I think I love you 2,000 times more than ever. Mm-hmm. Would you uh, like to prove it? Mm. Then lie back on those pillows and keep quiet. Oh, that is the trouble with you. One minute you talk wonderful love to me, and the next you're just another trained nurse. I don't see what you're complaining about. I'd love to spend a couple of days in bed being spoiled by Miss Cavanagh or Cavanagh. Scratch whatever your eyes out, Cavanagh. Oh, I think you would. David, listen seriously. Just because I feel sort of tired today doesn't mean I'm going to have to stay here much longer, does it? Of course not. You're supposed to feel tired today. Doc, Dr. Roland warned you. Warning and being are two different things. I feel like a fool spending all this money lying around in a hospital. <laughs> are, are you still worrying about a few pennies? Pennies? You have landed on a gold mine while I was here, have you? <laughs> <laughs> Darling, now we've planned this whole thing very carefully, and if you're a good girl, there's not a thing in the world to worry David, about. David, listen, now I figured that the baby shouldn't be a great deal more expense than Shakespeare. Shakespeare? Now that he's here, I mean. Are you comparing my son to a mere cat? Financially, financially. Oh, no wonder you feel tired. <laughs> Look, Claudia, stop trying to think. Just be your own sweet self and everything will be perfect. That's the thanks I get? You're welcome. Ah, that's right. Lean back. Here, give me a hand. Oh, David... Give me some of your strength. I wish I had yours, darling. Now you're sweet again. May we come in? Yes, come in, come in, come in. Look at this lovely gift we've received. Isn't it enormous? It certainly is. It's stunning. But so much fruit. I'll just put it down here where you can see it, Mrs. Norton. There we are. Why, I've never seen such a large basket. She must be a very good friend of yours. Here's the card. No friend of mine, whoever she is. I'll be back. There are lots more boxes for you in the elevator. Miss Cavney puts on her party manners when you're here. She seems to be a very competent nurse. She is, worse luck. Well, obviously not firm enough. Who's the fruit from? I don't know. Just a minute and I'll see. Nancy Riddle. Do I know her? Mm, vaguely. We met her at Julia's one night. Oh, the lady with the pink hair and too mm. much everything else? Yeah. Oh, stop. She has a farm in Eastbrook, too. Julia keeps wanting us to get more acquainted with her. Why does Nancy Riddle send me a present? She doesn't know me. For heaven's sakes, I don't understand. Well, she knows Julia, and some people make a profession of sending presents to people they don't know. She's pretty extravagant, if you extravagant? ask me. Extravagant? A lot of oversized oranges with a pineapple at the bottom? <laughs> you are a charmingly grateful little girl. <laughs> feel like a hypocrite, but anyway, I'm glad Nancy Riddle sent it. Oh. I think Miss Cavaney was starting to be embarrassed in front of the other nurses. A patient's loot is very important to a nurse's professional standing. Now stop putting on such a front. David, what are you talking about? This patient's loot is very important to this particular patient. Oh, rubbish. All right, all right, so it isn't. What are those books on your table? Best sellers. Your esteemed sister-in-law, Julia, sent them. Any of them good? Now, why on earth they're bestsellers, I'll never know. They all happened hundreds of years ago to people not like us at all. Besides which, there's not enough conversation in them. I know you. You you like a page that's full of quotation marks and nothing else. How'd you know? I'm your husband, remember? Oh, that's right. I How do you forgot. feel now, darling? Keep holding onto my hand, David. I'm right here. Another present. Oh, we're doing very well. Oh, there are still more articles. They've accumulated. You see, we only deliver them twice a day. Oh, I much prefer dribbles and drabbles. I'll be back. Here, open it up. It's for you. I wonder what it is. And who it's from. My, it's certainly wrapped up. Is it candy? It doesn't rattle. Oh, I hope it isn't another nightgown. Mrs. Killian sent me three. Three? I wish she'd sent me three smoke cams instead. Night sounds. People must think I'm going to spend the rest of my life in a hospital. Well, they don't know you. Well, here I am at the third layer of tissue paper. Oh! Huh. 
It's a very fancy set of toilet water and bath powder. Which you will never use. Presents after babies is like presents after weddings. Then it was salts and peppers, now it's nightgowns and toilet water. It's from somebody else I don't know. Another friend of Julia's? Her back bay aunt, I think. The one who didn't die. I should hope not. (gasps) David, did we send anything to the one who did die? Search me. We didn't all start to feel guilty. It's too late now. I wish I were the kind who remembers birthdays and things. Julia has quite a collection of that kind of friends. She's worked at it for a long time. Fine way to talk about your sister and all. And don't bite the hand that feeds me. I don't know why nobody sends anything to the father. What did you do? Oh, nothing, 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 no. (laughs) You're cute. Mm, I feel better now, a little. How better? Oh, I don't know, just better. Not so tired, maybe. I think I know why. Why? Tell you later. Tell me now. No, I think you should sleep. What do I want to sleep for? I'm starting to feel better. Suppose there's another present for me? Come on in. It's us again. With a big box in your arms. Flowers. Long-stemmed roses. Mm, they're so expensive. Yellow roses at that. I'll put them in some water. Can I even see them? Well, here's the card. Let me see. Let me see. Love from Edith Dexter. David, another friend of Julia's. Oh, Mrs. Norton, you're doing fine. Our room will just be filled with presents. I don't deserve them. David, I am just one big false pretense. Getting embarrassed. Well, you should. Reflected glory. Look at the light in her eye, Mr. Norton. You certainly have a good effect on your wife. I have? Oh, she's perked up ever so much since you've been here. Yes, ever so much. I always say love is the best medicine of them all. She's right. It is, David. The uh, light in your eye, darling. It's not love, it's greed. David, I promise not to worry anymore. I promise to rest. And I promise to feel fine every minute from now on if you will promise me one little thing. Anything. Darling, let's let Miss Cavaney think the light in my eyes because of love, not loot. After a warm morning's work, you're apt to put together a hit-and-miss lunch from leftovers in the refrigerator. Now, I'm going to tell you how to give any lunch an extra touch that makes it especially welcome on a day like this. When you reach into the icebox for sandwich makings or a salad, help yourself to an ice-cold bottle of Coke. That delicious refreshment will give you a party feeling, or my name's not Joe King. Well, say, Joe King, was your wife spoiled? My wife spoiled? Oh, mm-hmm. yes. A, a new baby is an occasion for miles around. Julia has really spread the news around, hasn't she? Mm, that's not all. She's coming in to see Claudia tomorrow. Well, I guess there's some women who just have to make the most of what happens to other people because it can't happen to them. Poor Julia. Will you be here tomorrow when she comes, David? It ought to be quite amusing, seeing as there'll be another visitor at the same time. Oh? Who's the other? Maybe that'll coax me. Oh, that'd be telling. You be here instead, David. All right. I will. So long, Joe. Bye, David. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.